I just got back from the most insane birding experience I think I've ever had. I went out looking for um, some nesting roseate spoonbills and I found them. I used the D850 for stills and I used the D500 to capture some glorious 4K video of these birds. But I found something else. Actually, I found probably the biggest group of birds I've ever seen in my life just doing some really crazy stuff. Come on, let me show you. A very pregnant white-tailed deer grazes in the cool morning hours. Her only concern at the moment is navigating the maze of spiderwebs clinging to the tall golden strands of grass. It is winter in Florida, a time when occasional cold fronts push through, bringing with them lower temperatures and thousands of migratory birds. I'm looking for an incredible bird decorated with brilliant colors and a rather odd-shaped bill, the roseate spoonbill. It's breeding season for this incredibly beautiful bird, and I'm lucky enough to be here for the start of it, and I'm really eager to share this experience with you. First things first, though, it's time to build some nests. Hmm, what would look good in the nest? How about a few of these cute little flowers? Yes, these look perfect. As a matter of fact, I think I'll take the entire plant. perfect time to grab some shots. I went with a faster shutter speed to freeze the movement of the bird. I was shooting wide open at f 5.6. I didn't really need a wide depth of field because the spoonbill wasn't too close. These birds can be challenging to photograph in the early morning light because they are so much brighter than the background and they're very reflective. With this set, I chose highlight weighted metering to keep the birds from getting overexposed and it worked very well. Another spoonbill flew in with this really large branch. I locked focus and fired off these shots. This time I was able to get a nice blue sky behind this incredible looking bird. And that large branch should make the perfect foundation for a nice sturdy but comfortable nest for these two expecting parents. This spoonbill has located the perfect piece of nesting material, but this piece of vegetation is still attached. Let's try that again. Okay, if I pull it this way, and then move like this. Okay, I got it. Well, I guess not. Preening those beautiful feathers seems like a much easier and better idea for the moment. Back at the nest and these two spoonbills decide to do some final tidying up around the place before a well-deserved nap. This location makes the perfect place to photograph these beautiful birds as they fly back and forth from their nests to the shoreline. One funny thing I noticed was how often I would get shots of these birds with their eyes closed. It makes me think these birds achieve a zen-like state of flying. They're just so good at it, they can cruise right on by with their eyes closed. In this shot, you can really see the huge amount of birds on the island rookery. And it's not uncommon to see several species of birds all right in the same area, like this beautiful little green heron. Being so close to the rookery means you can capture pretty much every stage of flight, like these two images. And I don't know if you noticed or not, but there is a great egret peeking through the trees in the lower right corner of this set. It isn't difficult to get some awesome head-on shots like these, where you get a much better idea of exactly how wide this bird's wingspan is. You can also reposition yourself to go for some backlit shots, where you get some nice rim lighting, or just enough light coming through those pink feathers to see some color. But these beautifully lit in-flight shots keep me coming back for more. I'm looking for a nice close-up shot where we can really see some detail. That's a little better, but uh, let's try another angle. Ah, perfect. Look at those beautiful wings. But let's try to get some more light on those beauties. There, that looks great. But I would like a fully lit wing, please. And there it is. That is just gorgeous. Okay, let's try a nice close-up with a different background. Wow, look at that beautiful bird. It is amazing how something as simple as the background completely changes an image. And this last one is my favorite image from this incredible bird. I really like the plain color of the background and how the light is strongest right in the middle of the shot. This will make a beautiful canvas for my wall and I think I'm gonna need a bigger house because I'm running out of wall space. I always joke about some of the many perils that I have to go through or that people go through wildlife photographers. Do you see this building behind me? 
This is one of the many perils that nobody ever talks about. This is a pit toilet. And if you've never had the pleasure of seeing a pit toilet, the inside of that bathroom was absolutely frightening. It was, I don't know what happened in there. It, scary stuff. I think I might even have a staph infection from just going inside there. All right, this is one of the really cool things about this place. This back road opens up and you can go miles back through this uh, marshy wetlands area and it's usually loaded with birds, but only on Thursdays. I don't know why that is. So if you look over on this side, you can't really see it yet, but if you look over on this side, you'll see it's nothing but marsh and wetlands and there's a great blue heron over here behind these palm trees. There's egrets everywhere. There's spoonbills, there's sandhill cranes, there's white pelicans, there's hawks, there's eagles, there's ospreys, there's kingfishers, there's alligators. There's just all kinds of great stuff and we're gonna find a bunch of it and I'm gonna show you. This area right here is like this big, huge wetlands. It's like almost like a sea of grass. It's really shallow, but it's really cool because there's a lot of frogs and other kinds of fish and stuff in here. And a lot of birds are hunting in it and there's a lot of egrets you'll see out here and great blue herons and it's really fun to sit here and watch them do their thing and pull stuff up out of this grass. I spot this great blue heron off in the distance and I can tell that it has something down in the grass. It has managed to capture a fish, an invasive species of catfish that can be extremely difficult to eat because of their spiky fins and hard bony bodies. Time to grab some shots before this heron flies away with its catch. This great blue heron doesn't want me watching. I think it's afraid I might try and steal its food. It takes one look at me, I grab a shot, and then the bird takes to the air and disappears in the marsh. This bird is an anhinga, or snake bird, and it has also speared a fish, and this bird repeatedly smacks the poor fish against the tree in an attempt to stun it. This is another great opportunity for some awesome photos. I managed to capture several images of this anhinga tossing this fish into the air, Shooting at a high shutter speed and at 9 frames per second really helped me capture each moment as this bird was playing catch with its food. As soon as I stopped shooting, the bird dropped the fish and the fish landed on the thick vegetation below before squirming its way back into the water where it swam away. Absolutely incredible. Here's a good close-up shot just in case you were wondering what this crazy bird looks like. Kind of looks like a dinosaur, doesn't it? It would seem that there were a lot of very hungry birds in the area. This great blue heron managed to capture a garfish, a long skinny fish with a mouthful of very sharp teeth. I've seen these fish grow to over six feet or two meters in length, but this particular one isn't going to be getting that big. Great blue herons and anhingas might share the same space, but they don't always get along. And this image is a good indication of that. It must have been breakfast time in the marsh because all of these birds were busy eating, including this beautiful red-shouldered hawk. It took to the sky and it's very obvious that this bird of prey was eating a snake. And that is a corn snake, also known as a red rat snake. Notice how the bird is holding the snake by the head? Hawks know that a snake's head can bite, so they quickly snap the snake's neck in order to prevent a potential bite. I found another red-shouldered hawk that had just taken a bath. I grabbed focus and fired off a burst of shots. I was amazed at the detail in this series of shots. The focus never shifted from the bird's eye, even though it violently shook for a few seconds in order to dry off. I really like the lighting in this series of images. All of those nice warm earth tones go so well together, and the detail on that hawk is just incredible. Here are the settings I used for this series. I used a shutter speed of 1 2,000th of a second and a wide aperture of f5.6. These settings, along with some nice light coming in from the front and side, made for the perfect recipe to capture some beautiful shots. Straight up ahead, all I can see on the horizon is like a layer of white. There's probably hundreds of white birds. Uh, pelicans, egrets, storks. Oh my gosh, there's a whole bunch of them. This is gonna be cool. I just looked with my zoom lens and I think almost all of these white birds up here are white pelicans, which are, uh, oh, they only come here in the winter, they're migratory and they're huge. So this should be really cool. I think the pelicans are feeding because it looks like they're really, really busy. Oh yeah, yeah, they're flying up and, oh man, this is gonna be for great photos. There's gonna be too many of them though. There's gonna be so many pelicans, I'm not gonna know what to focus on. This is awesome. Look at them all. <laughs> it's like a layer of white birds. Dude, there's storks, pelicans, egrets, great blue herons, and hingas. Dude, there's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 
over 30 great blue herons mixed in with all of these uh, pelicans and these turns look at what are these oh these are those big turns uh the cassian turns they're huge oh this is awesome this by far was the craziest bird feeding event i've ever seen in florida I counted 35 great blue herons in this shot. I didn't even try to count those big white pelicans, and that's just the beginning. There were ibis, egrets, terns, ospreys, and even a few eagles started to show up. For some reason, every single fish was in this back corner, and all the birds were having a great feed. I was lucky enough to be there to capture it. Talk about being in the right place at the right time. This was my lucky day. This huge amount of birds presented me with some challenges. Challenge number one, do you try and single out just one bird? If so, which one? Or do you try to get as many birds in one shot as possible? Challenge number two, that's a lot of white birds. The color white reflects every color of light back to the camera, which can result in exposure problems, especially during this part of the day. The sun was higher and much more harsh than the early morning hours. Not to mention, I'd be shooting through some very serious heat distortion due to the cold air hitting the warm surface of the water. I decided to use matrix metering and use exposure compensation to dial back that harsh light. This first shot shows a good portion of the birds in the back corner of the lake, but let's get a little closer. Now it's a little easier to see some of these individual birds. I ended up cropping in and making some of these shots really wide in order to fit as many birds into the shot as possible. They were constantly moving back and forth as the large school of fish moved around the back portion of the lake. It didn't take long for a few birds of prey to notice all this action. This osprey was the first on the scene and it literally fell out of the sky about 40 feet from me. A literal photobomb. I quickly moved to this bird and grabbed some shots before it got too far away. This little back section of this lake was proving to be just spectacular for bird photography. All of these birds in one small area meant there was a lot of competition for food and it didn't take long for the birds to start fighting. This egret grabbed itself a nice big tilapia, but this larger wood stork decided to assert some dominance by trying to bully the egret. The egret panics and tries to fly away as the wood stork gets closer. The wood stork getting this close proved to be too much for the egret as it drops the fish it was so proud of. The wood stork moves in, takes the fish, and the poor egret bows its head before flying away. The fighting continued as this crow or grackle, I'm not too sure on that, chased and harassed this ibis. Far off in the distance, a young eagle was sneaking up on an unsuspecting osprey while this great egret leisurely danced in the breeze. All of the pelicans started to take flight, so I grabbed a couple of shots before a few of them landed close by, giving me the perfect opportunity for a close-up. And that's when I spotted the young eagle flying back in. I fired a shot, and the eagle turned and looked right at me. I think this might have been my craziest bird experience to date. I have never seen so many birds in such a small area doing so many things. It was just massive bird overload. Hey, thanks for coming along. I had a great time. The uh, really good video in the beginning of those spoonbills was shot on the D500 with the 200 to 500 and a 1.4 teleconverter. Uh, this combination is turning out to be an incredible wildlife video machine in 4K. It's just glorious as you saw. Uh, click the thumbs up. As always, let me know what you thought of the video by leaving a comment or two. Um, subscribe if you haven't done that. You can click a little button somewhere around here and share the video. That's always really helpful. And until next time, see you later.